What is the absolute worst game you ever played? Maybe you thought of a game that was disappointing, or maybe you thought of a game that is filled with bugs and glitches. Although a few games I personally don't really like came to mind, I decided to find the definitive answer. I found a list of the top 100 lowest rated games on Steam, and I'm going to play them all to find out which game I personally think is the worst. Now, let's spin the wheel and get ready to go dumpster diving. Monopoly Plus? Interesting. Let's get right into it. My honest first impressions of Monopoly Plus are how lazy the entire game feels. First off, the Monopoly Plus logo doesn't show up when I look at the game in my library, but it's right there on the main screen. Then, once I start the game, I get the usual Ubisoft jump scare of making the audio extremely loud every single time you start up one of their games. Don't worry, I won't make you listen to it. This time. Just remember that you owe me. And I will collect. Now, what's the first screen I see when I start the game? A menu that shows all the languages. You will see this screen every single time you start the game. It's like Monopoly Plus thinks I'm going to wake up one day and go, you know what? I think I'm going to be French today. Oh, and the entire time you're in the menus, you get to hear the announcer make non-stop comments every 10 seconds. Imagine hearing this. This town has never looked so great. Over and over and over again. And to top it off, the graphics don't line up perfectly to my screen, and I had to keep changing the settings to fix it. On their own, none of these issues are really that important. But when you face all these little issues back to back, it makes you think if they even tested the game. These all seem like pretty easy fixes for a multi-billion dollar company. Now, if you've never played Monopoly before, here's a quick rundown. The game all boils down to one word. BUSINESS! You can roll the dice to go around the board, with doubles letting you roll again, and land on properties. You can either buy them outright or auction them off between all the players. If someone lands on your property, they owe you money. If you get each property of a certain type, like all the magenta colored properties, I'm colorblind, don't make fun of me, then you can build houses on them to increase how much money people pay when they land on your property. There's also tax spaces that make you lose money when you land on them, and chance and community chess spaces that give you cards with random effects. Oh, there's also a jail that you get sent to if you roll doubles three times in a row. Got it? Good. It looks like we get three maps. One of them is the classic board, one is a rabbit's board, which is just a reskin of the classic map, and one of them is the living board, which is actually a pretty cool 3D representation of Monopoly. But that's it. The game only has one original map. One. Map. I want you to sit there for a moment and think of any famous thing you want. Any series or brand. Don't worry. Oh wait. Corvette? There's a monopoly for that. The Avengers? There's a monopoly for that. How about the Australian city of Wagga Wagga? That's what I'm gonna call it at least. Yep, there's a monopoly for that. But all they could afford for this game was two maps and a reskin. At least the game rules seem fun. In all honesty, I only ever played with the free parking rule when I was a kid, meaning that all the money you pay when you land on tax spaces or lose money go to the free parking space, and from there anyone who lands on that spot gets all the money. So let's go ahead and choose that one and... I can only choose one rule? Are you kidding me? Why can I only use one rule? It's not like any of the rules directly contradict one another. If I want to, I should be able to get $1,000 every time I roll two ones, while also being able to build houses without owning all the properties. What is this, Monopoly Esports? Was it too hard to program multiple rules at once? And why are all the rules so lame? Why not add something cool like Monopoly Voice Banking, where you can speak into the mic to control the bank? Or what about Monopoly Sore Loser, where you accumulate those chips whenever you have to pay money that you can cash in for this absolute unit right here to steal money from the other players? You know how much more you can do in a virtual environment that is either extremely difficult, if not impossible, to do in the real world? But no, I guess being able to get money whenever I roll two ones is super cool too. At least all the cool Monopoly pieces are here, including this weird statue that is in five colors for some reason. But whatever, I talked way too much without even playing the game, so let's see what the gameplay looks like. The first thing we do is we get to roll to see who goes first. And you know how in Mario Party you all roll at the same time to make it feel like everyone is involved and to get you excited? Here you just get to wait and watch everyone roll before you start. In fact, there's a lot more waiting in this game than I expected. If you don't keep spamming the skip button, you have to wait through these painfully long turns the AI takes. Especially since they love to take their sweet time rolling the dice. It's just dice, you don't have to spend time charging up your roll, Marshall. Honestly, the game itself is just Monopoly. There's not really much I can comment on except for the AI. The AI love to auction out properties, and for the most part, they all just kind of drop out at the exact same time no matter the difficulty anyway. All I ever had to do was keep betting $1 if I wanted the property, and that's it. No real strategy there. 
When it comes to trading, I have absolutely no idea what the AI is thinking. The AI only ever initiated one trade, and that trade was so one-sided that it was immediately rejected. If I ever wanted any trades, I had to be the one to initiate. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think that the AI will always accept deals if what you are offering is quote-unquote worth more than what you want. For example, here I offered one more dollar than the property was worth. This red would give me all the red properties, so I could start building on arguably one of the most profitable set of properties in the game. But since I offered one more dollar than it was worth, the AI accepted. There's no negotiations or strategy here, it's just the biggest number of wins. And I honestly don't know what the AI was going to try to do to win this game. Mary had two yellows but refused to trade with David to get the third, and Leo forgot how to buy properties since he always auctioned them and then immediately backed out. Whatever, looks like I won this game. Woo. Next, I tried out the speed rules on the Rapids board, and honestly, the game went pretty similar to the first one. Since I had no idea what the rules were, and they don't have instructions anywhere, for the first 10 or so minutes I was confused since absolutely nothing was different from a regular game. Then, suddenly, one of the players rolled a red die and just teleported across the map. I was so confused I had to look up exactly what the game wanted me to do. So, you get a red die the first time you pass the ghost space. The red die has a 1, a 2, a 3, just like a normal die. All they do is make you go further, but if you get three of a kind, then you can teleport anywhere. Unfortunately, this only happened one time, and it was when I was adjusting my audio, so that shows how lucky I am. There's also a bus icon, which works by allowing you to split your roll. Let's say you get a six and a two. You can either go two spaces, six spaces, or six plus two spaces, which is eight if you never graduated kindergarten. The Monopoly Man is a weird one. The way he works is that you move forward the amount of spaces like normal, then afterwards you teleport to the nearest unknown space. If there are none, then you land on the nearest opponent's property, and you have to pay him money. I'm guessing that the reason this mode is quote unquote faster is because of this guy, since he forces you to give the other players money. Honestly, the new rules are just… fine. I can't say that I really had any more fun than I did the first game. I will say though, that Arel once got the bus on the die, and instead of choosing to land on her spot, she instead chose to land on my spot to pay me money. This is the hardest difficulty of bot, by the way. Now, before I get to my final review, there's one mode I haven't talked about before. The online mode. Since I couldn't convince any of my friends to spend $15 on this game, and for some reason nobody wants to play Monopoly Plus online, instead I'm just going to read to you some of my favorite Steam reviews about it instead. There is no option to add bots to a multiplayer game. This means if you and a friend want to play, it's only you against your friend, with no option to add AI opponents. If the host disconnects and then tries to rejoin, they're automatically bankrupted. There are no dedicated servers, and since it is on Uplay, you cannot join through Steam, meaning you have to add people and invite them on Uplay. But once you start a lobby, you have 5 minutes to get everyone in before the game starts. For a game produced by a multi-billion dollar company, I gotta say that I am extremely disappointed. I feel like this game is just a bunch of missed potential. There's only 3 maps, and only one of them is worth playing. There are a couple of set of rules, but all of them are bland and you can only play one set of rules at a time. The actual game itself isn't fun either. The AI take too long, they often agree to poor trades regardless of their difficulty, and they only ever initiated a trade one time in two games. If you really want to play Monopoly with friends, I would recommend buying something like Tabletop Simulator over this game. Unless you are really that desperate for AI players to go against, I can't recommend anything here. Monopoly Plus is, is just terrible, especially for the amount of people who worked on the game but it is just barely better than Airport Simulator 2014, since there's actually some sort of content here, so it's getting second place for now. Anyway, I hope to see you all in the next episode of Dumpster Diving. Peace out.